Saya Hassan uh, is an Iranian-Canadian pro-democracy activist fighting to change the Islamic regime in Iran. She is a blogger, um, and she'll tell you more about her blog, I trust, and a criminal defense lawyer, and we are proud to have her as a contributor to Free and Press Online Journal, and uh, you may have seen some of her uh, contributions. She's written about four, uh, how should Canada deal with the Iranian regime, that was uh, that was posted on September the 24th. She also posted in July several articles, the Al-Qud hate rally, yet again, and Canada must not acquiesce to Iranian regime propaganda and the like. I'm so proud to invite her to the podium. Saya, let's give her a warm welcome. about a topic that's very dear to me, and that's the pro-democracy movement in Iran, and also why we as Canadians should also get involved in that movement. I want to tell you a little bit about myself so that you have some background and contact information on why I'm here and why I'm promoting complete regime change in Iran. I was born in Iran right after the revolution, and for the first seven years of my life, I lived through the Iran-Iraq war, where one million people died by the time the war was finished after eight years. When I was seven years old, I was forced to flee my country with my mom, dad, and my two siblings, because my father was a regime opponent. He was arrested once, and uh, he was released because he had certain connections that were able to help him. But we knew that it was just a matter of time before he would be arrested again and most likely face execution. Uh, in the middle 1980s, it was a very dangerous time in Iran. The regime was executing tens of political prisoners every single day. In the summer of 1988 alone, 10,000 political prisoners were arrested and executed summarily. So it was very dangerous, we knew my father was in danger and we had to escape. Um, we fled to Turkey and we lived there for five years as refugees under very, very difficult conditions until thankfully we were able to come to Canada. And I'm really grateful to be here because I've had the opportunity to be who I want to be and to say what I need to say without facing any persecution. And Canada is a great country. It's a secular country and it's a free country. I feel very fortunate uh, to be here today. Unfortunately, my story is not unique. Millions of Iranians were forced to flee Iran after the revolution to save their own lives or save the lives of the people that they love. Today, there are thousands of people in thousands of Iranians in countries like Turkey, Iraq, India, Pakistan, spending years of their lives in limbo, waiting for a safe passage to a safe country. And as difficult as that, as that process is, we're the lucky ones because we were able to get away with our own lives. There are hundreds of people who were not, so, hundreds of thousands of people in Iran who were not so lucky. Since the regime has come to power, they have executed more than 100,000 political prisoners. And the number of people that they've arrested, tortured, and raped in order either, either to break them and make sure that they don't oppose the regime or to get false confessions from them is even higher. Uh, so I'm sure it's not going to come as a surprise to you that I've de dedicated my life to the overthrow of the Islamic regime because of my own personal experiences and because I've seen so many other Iranians go through the same thing. I know that many of you here are already aware of what is going on in Iran, the human rights situation, and I don't want to go into details about that. I think you all know about the discriminatory Islamic laws, uh, the lack of freedom of speech, freedom of expression, freedom of assembly, the arbitrary arrest, the torture, the rape, the constant executions of political prisoners. 
Um, what I'm really hoping to achieve today is to give you a reason to care, to be concerned, and also to get involved in the pro-democracy movement. Now, you might be asking yourself, uh, why should I care? How does that affect me? How does it affect Canada? And you might feel uh, that there's a distance that protects you from the Islamic regime. But you would be completely wrong. One of the things that you might not be aware of is the Islamic regime's strong presence right here in Canada. Even though the Islamic regime's embassy was shut down in June of 2013, the regime still has a very strong presence in Canada, and especially here in Toronto, where they have a very strong foothold. Where can we see the regime's presence here? The most obvious one is in the mosques and in the Islamic centers, especially here in Toronto. Um, here we have the Al Mahdi Mosque, which is a mosque that is backed by the regime, funded by the regime, and there's a lot of clear evidence that this is a mosque that's affiliated with the regime. When I found out about this about two years ago, I went in front of the mos mosque and I did a short informative video exposing who these people were and what the mosque was all about. And I can't tell you the amount of hate mail and the threats that I received because these people didn't want me to expose what this mosque stood for. Um, another Islamic center is the Islamic Center of York Society. And uh, this organization, they organize events regularly commemorating the death and the birth and the legacy of Khomeini. Uh, for those of you who don't know who Khomeini is, he was the founder of the Islamic Revolution and he's someone that we, most of us Iranians, call the Islamic butcher because he was responsible for the execution of thousands of political prisoners. He was also one of the biggest supporters of uh, uh, terrorist organizations such as Hezbollah and Hamas. And of course there were his, his views on women that it's perfectly okay to beat your wives and also it's perfectly okay to marry nine-year-old girls and sexually assault them. So we have Islamic centers right here in Canada preaching that it's okay to beat your wife. It's even encouraged actually. It's okay to sexually assault nine-year-old girls. This is right here in Canada. We're not talking about Iran. We're not talking about Afghanistan. Uh, and here, I mean, we have such strong laws to protect women against those sort of uh, domestic abuse. We have laws to protect children from sexual assault. And yet this is going on right here. And the worst part is it's going on without any opposition from us. And of course, it doesn't end there. The regime is in our universities through Iranian student organizations, Palestinian student organizations, Islamic student organizations. And these organizations are constantly organizing events that promote that sort of Islamic extremist agenda. They're creating a very threatening environment for secular students who want to just learn in a free and a threat-free society. They're intimidating Iranian students who want to bring awareness about the human rights situation in Iran. One of the worst culprits of this is the Carleton University in Ottawa, where every single year they organize events to commemorate once again Khomeini's life, his death, his legacy, and they actually invite very prominent people. They invite members of parliament, they invite Canadian professors, they invite the media who actually attend these events, and they're promoting this sort of hateful uh, agenda with our consent because none of us are speaking out, unfortunately, and none of us are saying this has to stop. And I'll give you one last example, which most of you probably know about. Every year, uh, Islamic regime sympathizers organize what is called the Al Quds Day of protests on Queens Park here in Toronto. Al Quds is a day that was founded by Khomeini, and it's a day for support. Uh, it's a day to support Palestinians, but it's also a day against the state of Israel, and it's quite anti-Semitic. So these uh, Islamic regime sympathizers, they gather in Queen's Park every August 
with pictures of Khomeini, with flags of Hezbollah, with their hateful chants and slogans. Uh, they have speakers that go as far as calling Israel a cancer that has to be removed. And again, this is happening without much opposition. But I'm happy to say this year was the first year that they, these people were not granted a permit to protest on Queen's Park. And I'd like to thank it. I'd like to think it's because last year the Iranian community came together with the Jewish community and we were very active in exposing these people. We were active in the media, we were active in speaking with our government officials, and I'd like to hope that it worked. And this year they were refused a permit. So coming together and speaking out, it works, and I hope that's going to um, uh, encourage all of you here to get involved as well. Um, before I finish, I wanted to keep this short, just to keep your attention. I just want to reiterate that the Islamic regime is not some faraway entity. It's right here in Canada. It's a threat to our Canadian values. And I think, I hope that it's, it's up to all of us to come together to speak out and to let our own Canadian government know and to let the Islamic regime know that we're not going to tolerate regime's presence in Canada. Thank you for your attention.